Yellow crazy ants were first discovered in 2010 by two of our biologists who were out on a once every couple of years tour to go check on the island. And when they were there, they just suddenly discovered ants everywhere. Initial impact, it was dramatic. It was, there were carpets of ants everywhere. It, it was, you could not, you could see where people walked just because you would see the, their footprints and the crushed ants. If you stood in one spot for more than two minutes, there were ants like coming all the way up to like your pant legs and things like that. The red-tailed tropic birds were getting completely swarmed and um, yellow crazy ants spray formic acid. And so when they were spraying that in the eyes, it caused the eyelid to kind of get swollen and milky and eventually it blinds the bird. And for chicks that are developing in an infestation area, not only are they blinded, but the development of their beaks is severely impacted as well. So uh, it was, this this island is what, what we think is the largest breeding colony of red-tailed tropic birds in the world. Imagine you laying in a park around the grass somewhere and ants crawling all over you. That's, that's really annoying and irritating. That's exactly what was happening with the birds. But uh, unlike us, we'll just get up and move to a different spot. The birds don't have that option. If they do that, they risk not finding their mate again because they need to be in that exact same spot for the mate to find them. And if they leave it, uh, they, they probably won't find their mate in that huge colony. And so actually what winds up happening is you wind up losing two or three years of reproductive success for every bird that gets displaced in that way. Um, and so it's like a big deal for the seabird itself uh, when that happens. Um, and these seabirds, so they really want to stay there. Um, they don't want to move, which is why they would tolerate the ants for so long to the point where they didn't sleep for like a day or two and we'd find them in the morning and they'd just be feathers all ruffled and stained from the acid. They'd be panting from stress, even though it was cool in the morning, it wasn't heat or anything. They were just stressed out from the annoyance. Turning point was, I would say, from going from effective control to effective eradication was when we learned from a, a group, the Nature Conservancy and the Park Service, I believe working in the Channel Islands and Argentine ants were using something called hydrogel. Uh, so what they would do is uh, mix, up, mix up your pesticide and water, add some sugar so it tasted good, and then they would absorb all that fluid in these uh, plastic granules, and then they would spread them everywhere. And the, the key was the, the ants didn't have to eat this pesticide. Uh, they would taste it. I'm like, oh, that tastes good. I'm going to pick up this whole crystal and carry it into the nest. Versus all the other baits we used in the past, they had to eat it to absorb it and then bring it to the nest and regurgitate it. This way with the crystals, um, they just tasted it, it was good. They could carry a crystal into the nest, leave it in the nest for other ants to feed, go out and get it. And so each forager was making multiple trips before it finally had a lethal dose of its own. And so that's what allowed us to finally get the, the killing doses down into the deep nest that we can't reach ourselves. So that was, that was the key in effectively eradicating the ants and not just controlling them. The biggest change I've noticed is a lot of vegetation. The island kind of, the nature is reclaiming the island and um, the birds are thriving. The birds are doing fabulously because there are, there are not these uh, invasive ants that are negatively impacting them.